Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, four. How you say five in Iranian? Pine. No, oh, bola bola. Four for the American. Uh, pine for the Iranian. And this is all for master. <laughs> So I went to eat in the Thai restaurant. Eh? I went with um, the with hotel bus, eh? a small, small bus. So because it's a festival going on, eh? so I, um, I was trying to discuss. I stepped out of the bus already. There's a minivan. Eh? I was trying to discuss with the driver because he asked me if you should come back to get me or not. In the hotel, they have this service. And of course, you give generous tip to the driver. It's not included, but you give. And they all love to drive me around. Whoever drive that day, you know, they love, always volunteer. Me, me, me too. Oh, no. So he was asking what time he should come back to get me. Because that day is too busy. Taxi will not able to go in there. No? He has special hotel car and the design, so he could go into some crowded or special area. The street is very small. Eh? So I said, I, I don't really know, maybe two hours or something, I finished eating. And we were talking a little bit, and the rich man, he sit next to the table, next to that street where I was talking, and he keep banging on the plastic sheet. <laughs> it's summer. It's not quite summer, but they put an extra room outside with a plastic sheet because it's not allowed to build, yeah? But inside is a building, a restaurant, real, but outside a corridor, they put plastic to cover. And they keep knocking on it because the car keep uh, engine on, you know? I think he just want to say, get lost. <laughs> okay, so I told him, oh, never mind, I get the taxi. I go back by taxi, don't worry. So I let the driver, go home, because I don't want to talk further, no? He, he tried to give me phone number and whom to call in case he's not there, he call whom, whatever, and then they come and get me, yeah? So I gave him tip and let him go back to the hotel. And when I come in, of course, I order my food and eat and all that. And then uh, they start talking across the table and to me, you know? And he invited me to the yacht, that's how I said. His girlfriend told me. <laughs> they sit together, you know? I don't know why he had to talk through the girlfriend. Maybe it is a man uh, courtesy, you know, man stuff. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, <laughs> you might have trouble. <laughs> Maybe discuss first with the girlfriend whether or not <laughs> I'm entitled <laughs> to go on the yacht. So she say, I, he, he invites you to the yacht. I say, oh, really? He has a, a, a restaurant? Oh, is there a restaurant on the yacht somewhere? She said, no, no, he's on yacht, a private. He wants to invite you to his yacht. I said, oh, oh, nice, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we make a time, you know, and I went there and all that. You know, the yacht harbor is very small. Monaco, priceless already. He could even park his yacht there permanently. On top of that, he has a car parked right in front of his yacht. You know, the street on the harbor between the yacht is precious already. He can do that. So you know how much dinero, okay, <laughs> he has. <laughs> Never mind. It's not our main point. I'm just trying to tell you that. That is funny. That in Monaco, everybody, whoever powerful and rich, are in Monaco. Even his girlfriend told me that immediately, at the start already, you know? Because he invited me to his yacht, not her yacht, of course, it's just maybe girlfriend, secretary, or at that time I didn't know, I didn't care. And they're together, a big table with many other friends, so I thought it's safe, you know? I, I don't doubt anybody, especially in Monaco, yeah? So I said, oh, nice, okay? Where and all that, yeah? Oh, he told me where, where. And then we get talking and say, are you tourists? <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> oh, it's stupid. At that time, I even don't know. People who has a yacht, how can be a tourist? <laughs> 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 
So she told me, no, we live here. We are rich and powerful. I said, ah, oh, I reckon so. <laughs> Pardon me <laughs> for questioning. <laughs> so he invited you to his yacht. I said, okay. And then we keep talking, we share the food and all that. So I know them from then. Yeah? And he has also a big apartment in one of the apartment complex in Monaco, on the beach, you know? Yeah, most of them are on the beach. The rich people, they live only near the beach, next to the beach. My hotel was also on the beach, except it's not mine. <laughs> my room, <laughs> my rented room. Yeah, uh, but of course I dress nicely, you know? In Monaco, you cannot dress badly, the police will talk to you. <laughs> I think, what business you're doing in our paradise? Maybe a thief or something? In Monaco, very strict. If you go with motorcycle, they stop you 10,000 times. From one step to another, always stopping you. Even doctors, you know. They also went by motorcycle. I know that because one of my doctors, that time I was very sick. At one time, not that time, maybe not that time, I was very sick. That's why I went to that beach hotel, you know, because uh, last time when I was sick, I coughed for two months long and went there. I just keep drinking juice every day, and then I got cured very quickly. Yeah, immediately after one week or ten days, two months long coughing. I was exhausted, so I went there. I thought the the air, you know, would be good for me. Another time, not that time. I can't remember which time anymore. I come and go. Sometimes I came from France. I don't nec necessarily stay in Monaco to go to that Monaco Thai restaurant. Okay, I can't remember if I came from. SMC or Italy somewhere, you know, I go around all the time for different reasons. So they say they're not tourists and he parked. And so uh, the day I went to his uh, yacht, mm, mm, of course she's there too, huh? and I think uh, maybe a couple of friends, or no, I forgot. Mm. Uh, but the yachts, they pack with each other, you know, it's safe anyway. You among the yacht, you know, and the people all the time. It's a harbor, you know. That busy. So I saw his, I saw the car, the um, Excalibur car. They don't make them anymore. I bought one when I was in America, just to drive around. I, I like the design so much, and it's so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it's second hand, but it's only 1,000 uh, miles or something, because the owner was an old man. He didn't drive too much, not even 1,000 miles, some hundreds. Some hundred miles. So it's very cheap, you know? And so I bought it and drove it, but it's very bumpy. It's like driving a horse, you know? Oh, my God. It looked beautiful. <laughs> it's like Corvette, you know? It's like sport car. It's not very comfortable. So even the porch and all that, they're not comfortable because the, the seats are so low, you know? I didn't own any porch, but I was driven in one. Uh, acquaintance or friend uh, porch and, oh my God, it hurt your bum so much, <laughs> especially if they go on high, ways, high speed. They love this car because it's like a sport car, you know, and they can drive fast because the, the seat is very low and the car also low, so they can go fast, fast. But the seat is so hard, not even like a post or anything. Why do you like this kind of car? <laughs> and also there's another car they induced me to buy. You know, I, I dress so nice or something, or I look rich, I don't know, I didn't wear any jewelry or anything. I just dress like, like anybody. Yeah. For example, this is just a normal dress, there's nothing poshy about it. Just a summer dress, a long dress, yeah? But you say, I look good, fine, I understand, I believe you, but it's nothing special. I bought it in Hong Kong, uh, open, open market, flea markets, yeah. And this is just a scarf that S SM clothes, they just uh, cut it and then sew on the four side and then it becomes a scarf, okay? Nothing really special. So I dress, you know, normal, and they think I'm rich. I keep telling me to buy this big car, you know, so a more expensive car, like uh, what? Uh, I forgot the name. I don't use it often, that's why. Oh, uh, tell me. You and the men should know. Rolls Royce is one. Man Bentley is another <laughs> Italian. Maserati. Yeah, yeah. And what else? Lamborghini. 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 Yeah, oh, man. 
I said, I don't want this car. I don't drive very well. I just want some simple one. But I like the design because, because I don't see that anywhere before. I have never seen it. So I thought, oh, it's nice. You know, I'm a designer. Just, this tick me. <laughs> so I tick it. <laughs> then I wanted it and then they keep inviting me to buy other car. Uh, forcing me to say, just sit, you know, <laughs> sit on it, have a feel of it, and then tell me. <laughs> Typical salesman. <laughs> I say, don't want to sit. I said, I want to buy this car and go home to my dogs. <laughs> oh, just sit, man. Uh, one minute, uh, one half a minute. I uh, cost you nothing. Ah, uh, keep saying so. I have to sit one car, and then they move to <laughs> me to another car to sit. <laughs> and Lamborghini, Lamborghino, whatever. Oh, this is so low. And I'm already very short. <laughs> I sit in the car, I see nothing. <laughs> you don't believe me, you sit in a Lamborghini. <laughs> you will have a feel of it. I say, I feel nothing, I see nothing. How, <laughs> How am I going to even drive this thing? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, and they say, you, you have a cushion, cushion. I say, oh, no, no. <laughs> I say, no, it's okay. Please, don't make trouble for yourself. Uh, I don't fancy this car, okay? Very difficult to move myself from... In mobile car, you know, they just sit me there and close the door and just stand outside and keep talking to me <laughs> with half open window. I could not even escape. I'm <laughs> telling you, these salesmen, they are really special. <laughs> and okay, so I bought that second hand Excalibur. Yeah, they are collection. I didn't know much about collection or not collection, nothing. I know zero of a car. I just like that car. And it's cheap, available, quick. So I bought it. Uh, anyway, afterward, I feel like, oh, driving this car <laughs> is more difficult than buying it. <laughs> and then it stopped right in the middle of the highway the first time I drove home. Oh my God, it was a scare. You know, lucky there's no car at that time. So I'm trying so hard, you know, to inch my way into the grass area and bling the one in light crazily. I'm worried the truck or any drive, you know, any long truck, you know, America, they have long, big truck and they drive, you don't care about anything. They have light everywhere. You should see them, but they don't see you. <laughs> you know, they blink light all over the body of the car, you know that? Yes. All the tails and the head and the, and the uh, lungs on both sides. So people have to see them. But I wonder if they even see any people, you know, they're so big. And so tall and so massive, you know. Oh, I was so scared. I was all alone. I don't have any boy and anything, muscle around to help me and nothing. Or to wave the flag saying stop. <laughs> or passing, you know, uh, be, pay attention to the kaput car. No. The reason I don't know because um, there's a clock to, to measure the fuel, you know. And it say full. But I didn't have it. <laughs> Maybe only a quarter or something. I drove into the highway and then it just stopped right in the middle of it. Oh, man. Okay, I'm still here. So, you know, it was okay. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but for me, it was really a scare, especially for, you know, best tough world driver like myself. Oh, terrible. I already knew car, you know, lousy driver. And stop in the highway. Imagine, imagine if it's you. No, don't have to. You know it. <laughs> but <laughs> that's another time of scare of my life because in Slovenia, I drove also the stick ship first time ever in my life with a two-second instruction from the, from the rent guy because he, he busy. He has to go home. His daughter, birthday, cannot talk anymore. <laughs> hey, and take it <laughs> or not. <laughs> it's the only car available. <laughs> And all the disciples from all the directions come in toward me already. At that time, I, I cannot go with anybody. I have to be alone. So I run, you know, with the car. I want to run, but the car doesn't really <laughs> <laughs> want to run too much. <laughs> I try so hard, and then finally the car started. 
and everybody comes shouting, Master, we have car here for you. Come, come with us. That's the thing I didn't want. <laughs> everybody shouting, and I run so fast, as fast as I can out of that circle of disciples with big luggage and, you know, big hair, boo-boo, and all kind of people. <laughs> all right, I ran out. Oh, and then kapum, kachak, kapum, kapa. You know, it stopped 100,000 times on the highway. <laughs> Any time, anytime, I put my foot on the wrong, <laughs> wrong part of I had to stop because of, I don't know, whatever, you know, uh, red light or green light. Then it stopped altogether. And I had to try very hard to figure out how to start it again. <laughs> oh my God, and it did start. And I did go to a hotel, the nearest possible I saw. I said, that's it, no more. <laughs> and, and I called the man standing in front of me, please, come, drive my car in your... <laughs> please, quickly. He said, you drive in here. He said, no, you drive. <laughs> I was outside of the driveway, you know, shouting on top of my lungs, you come out here, drive my car. <laughs> he, he was helpless. He didn't know what's going on. Why he has to go out on the driveway? He's a doorman, you know, he should stay there. Open door only, you know, expecting tips. That's all his job is. Why he has to go out and drive my car? Why I'm there already in the driver's seat and I have to shout on him, tell him to go out. Say, please come out. <laughs> and then I keep waving like a lunatic and he finally capis or he, he curious to come out and have a look. What, what's wrong with this lady? <laughs> So I came out and I said, please, <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm worried I'm bombing through your plants or your beautiful flowers around here. Please drive it. I'm very tired. So he said, oh, okay, 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 ma'am, you go in. I take you in and I drive your car in for you. So he saw my face, you know, so desperado. You know? <laughs> no need to explain anymore. And he helped me, you know, almost like carrying me like a baby. <laughs> hold my hand, my arm, you know, both arms, and then almost like carrying me because I'm like, like a dragging myself. Oh, after all the nerves, you know, wrecking on the highway and stopping 100,000 times, what do you think I would look like? <laughs> and then finally, I went in the reception area, I just flopped out there. And then he understood. And he went out, take off my luggage inside, helped me to fill in the form, everything. He, he probably thinking, I'm dying somehow. <laughs> Are you crying? Why? Huh? I'm just too happy. Are you so happy? <laughs> no, um... I almost die. <laughs> no, I just... In Slovenia, are you happy? <laughs> I was dying on the highway almost. In America, highway, are you happy? Oh, thank you. What good disciples are for? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. I'm just joking. You cry as much as you want. I cry enough already. I don't cry no more now. <laughs> okay, fine. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I risk my life so many times. <laughs> you know, I, I went alone all the way in European tour, all alone, carrying luggage and on, heavy on the steps and everything, alone. I could have taken a lot of people or even people on the road, you know, meeting in the airport and all that. I cannot. I just don't want to see anyone. But lucky, everything okay. <laughs> I put on this uh, flashing light, uh, is it emergency light. Yeah, no, like this, emergency light, hazard. all the way, huh? Hazard light. Uh, hazard light, you know, blinking both sides, and a front light, back light, whatever light. I can turn on. I turn on. <laughs> Everybody passing me, and. Huh? Hello? I said, yeah, hello. <laughs> Please, sorry, sorry, sorry. I keep saying sorry all the time to all the cars that pass me. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> and then they are laughing and smiling or very sympathetically or something. I don't know. I had no chance to even look closer, you know. I just said, sorry, sorry, and then I run, you know, with the car. And that was, uh, oh, why I talk about that? Oh, okay. Excalibur. Yeah, so that's the first time or second time I risked myself on the unknown car, you know. The Excalibur, okay, I bought it. Uh, so it's in America. I saw it already anyway. But it's so beautiful. It's the most beautiful Excalibur. Because there are many Excalibur, but it's not that one. That one is uh, like a 
light cream outside and inside a darker cream seat. Everything is just so perfect, you know, very light, not showy, but extremely making a statement, you know. Ah, I love it so much. And there are other Excalibur, but sometimes they mix match, you know, like in front is black, behind is brown, or in the middle is blue, uh, or white, whatever, you know, it doesn't look uh, smooth uh, with your eyes. I just like that one. I saw many afterward, not that many, but because they have only maybe only 200 cars of that type, and then they did not make any more for any reason, I did not research. My car is about the 30th car. Mm. A collection, mini rare item, you know, like antique stuff, you know, for collectors, not like a common car for sale. Mm. So I saw some of them before. They're, they are also Excalibur, same style, but because the, the color don't match well. It's not artistic looking, not so sleek and not so uh, elegant, you know. Oh, I love that car so much. Mm.